Good morning, good morning, good morning, and praise be to God, and welcome to the morning Bible reading with Victoria Cherie on this morning. Praise the Lord. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this live audio, and I plead the blood of Jesus over every listener. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. So yesterday, you guys, we were we read in the book of Acts chapter 9, and this morning, we're going to do um, chapter 10 in the book of Acts. Praise the Lord. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a satyrian of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God alway. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now men to Joppa, and and now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein we all, wherein, where, wherein Lord Jesus, were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius, the Satyrian, a just man, and one that feared God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them, and on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Verse 24, and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and their friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation, 
But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying. As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me? And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now, therefore, are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost, as well as we And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then pray they him to tarry certain days. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And the word of the Lord is blessed on this morning. Praise be to God. So I thank God for the reading of chapter 10, the book of Acts. Um, It specifically is just speaking about the Holy Ghost and how God does not have a respect of persons. And how Peter had received the word of the Lord of meaning that when God sends people is this there's no uncommon or unclean thing that comes from God and how he was not supposed to, you know, be judgmental to those who were not Jews. And it was amazing because in the word of God, it speaks about how the Lord is not um, a respecter of persons. So not only did he pour out the Holy Spirit to the Jews upon the Jews, but he also poured out the Holy Spirit upon the Gentiles. And that was truly a blessing and it showed forth what God had spoken. And as Peter was speaking, they received the Holy Ghost because of the power of God that was in, that was over and in Peter. Praise the Lord. And I remember in my life, um, praise the Lord. I'm going to stop real quick before I continue speaking and just say good morning to everybody. God bless you all. Good morning, Sister V. Hello. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Good morning, Sister Sabrina. I believe that's, yeah, that's Sister Brenna. God bless you. And good morning, Derek. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I just wanted to touch bases um, about we were out of the book of Acts chapter 10. And it's just amazing, um, you know, when the power of God is going forth 
That means the Holy Ghost is present, praise the Lord. And they received it while Peter was speaking. And uh, I love how Peter immediately lifted up Cornelius as Cornelius bowed down to worship Peter. Peter snatched him up and said, I'm only a man. Do not worship me. And it's so true that so oftentimes people will look at the gifts that God has blessed you with and they begin to worship that gift. They begin to worship you instead of worship the one who blessed you and, and gave you that gift. Instead of worshiping God, instead of laying before him and praising God, people have turned it around completely to worship man. And I love how Peter just kind of like immediately gave glory back to God. It's not me. It's not me. So praise be to God. We got to be very careful that we, you know, don't worship man. And there's other things too that we, that we actually worship and we really don't pay attention to. And I am guilty of. Um, these phones, praise the Lord Jesus, this technology, the social media, um, we have to be very careful of, you know, what we choose to put before God. Worshiping is what we, you know, we give all time to and we devout all of our energy and strength to. And and as I begin to remember, I ask the Lord to help me to this daily because even, you know, getting on social media or um, even worshiping marriages. And I'm not saying in the sense of, oh, you know, um, this person is married. I'm talking about the idea of marriage. Um, all these things that come before God, that's not what we're supposed to do. Idolizing and worshiping. And it's, and it's very, um, it comes very quickly. We may not pay, put attention to, to it. If um, we wake up in the morning and we don't Tell the Lord, God, thank you for waking me up this morning or spend time with him before we grab our phones. I'm asking the Lord to help me with that, Lord Jesus, because that's bad. Um, and I, I watch how over time, you know, technology increases. Things start getting all these better features and our attention starts to go elsewhere. And that means our focus begins to go off of God. And um, if we really take a step back, that means our focus puts more on the technology, which helps pull us away from God. And once our focus is off of God, our focus is off of the things that he wants us to do. And um, I remember seeing a meme that um, everybody, it was at the dinner table and this family, and everybody was on their phone, except for the youngest child, and I looked at that meme and I, it touched my heart and I felt, I immediately, I felt guilty. And I said, oh Lord Jesus, because there was no communication happening at that table. There was no, I mean, I don't know if they uh -huh. prayed or not, but there was nothing. And we cut off all lines of communication for something that's not human. <laughs> and, um... It's amazing, but we get so caught up in it. And I'm like, Lord, forgive me, because I, I get so caught up in the whole thing that's drawing my attention away, you know, and it puts me in a place to where like, Lord, I start realizing, Lord, I haven't been reading in my personal time as much. I haven't been praying to you like I used to. I haven't been doing this. I haven't been doing that. Lord, help me. And that's when fasting comes into play. And that's when Cornelius was saying that in the word of God, that he was fasting, and that's on that ninth hour, I believe on that fourth day, he was speaking. Um, yeah, uh, verse 30, he said, and Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting. So that's when fasting comes into play. And that's why fasting is so important because we have to take some time out from this world, from this flesh to put us right back in line to what God wants us to do. And we got to be able to shut down that flesh and God will, able, will be able to give us the strength to do so. But we have to put our focus back on God and take away from all the folks, fasting from everything, food, you know, um, the TV. If you notice that you watch too much TV, but the most important thing is that fasting, that's, that flesh has to be able to suffer. And I remember when um, I began to fast, I think I fasted one day without eating anything. And I felt the suffering. I was like, oh Lord, then all of a sudden, this is what happens because this is what happens to us daily and we may not pay attention to it. As I began to fast on that first day, 
it was like, okay, oh, I'm hungry. Wait a minute. And I'll go past the refrigerator. Now, I don't already state it to the God. I'm going fast. This is how the enemy works. This is how simple, simple and slick he is. I, I'm looking in the refrigerator. No, I'm, I'm fast. I'm going to give me a, a cup of water, Lord Jesus. And then I look up and I see some fruit or something. And I reach for it. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, I wasn't supposed to be eating. If you're, if you don't feel the suffering in your spirit, if you don't feel the suffering in your flesh, your flesh is like really wanting. That's when we buckle down. When you feel that suffering and cause you know, the body wants to eat food, 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 food. When you begin to feel that suffering. So that first day I had to buckle down. I had to pray and I had to get in the word of God. Now fasting without reading the word of God and praying, mm, that's going to be one tough cookie. Fasting, reading the word of God and praying is like a, it's, it's double. You need it. You need it. And so on that second day of fasting, uh, I, I kind of got past the first day and I said, okay, Lord, me and you, Lord, be my strength. Who Jesus. And it starts to, cause I start to be able to feel the suffering of my flesh because now my flesh wants food. And now everything, <laughs> I get to work and guess what day it is? Somebody want to be generous and, and bring in a box of donuts. And I'm sitting there like, Lord Jesus, and no, and I'm hungry. Ain't nothing but the trick of the enemy. But that is what happened. And that's why fasting is so important because we have to be able to put this flesh under subjection. We have to make that decision, but we can't do it alone. We have to continue to ask God to be our strength. In Jesus' name. And knowing that with God, all things are possible. When you're fasting and you hear yourself say, I can't do it, that's nothing but the enemy. You can with God. We can't do this alone. If we are able to fast on our own, we'll be fasting all day, every day, but we can't. If we are able to not do the things that our flesh wants to do by ourselves, we can't do it. But we can do it with God. So I thank the Lord on this morning for what he has given me. I know I have to continue to do and put my focus back on God because there's so much, there's so many things that take our focus off of what's important. And it's made to do just that. It's made to do it. You think about all the upgrades to phones these days. They don't went from um, the chocolate bar phones to the flip phone, well, first, the chocolate bar phones to the Burberry to the flip phones. And now they got these upscale technology phones that where it's walking computers. We really don't have that time to set aside and spend and speak with our children or that time to sit and speak to our spouses or that time to really get to know and teach our children on what the goods and the bads of life as what they used to do back in the day when we did not have that. That's what's a, that's lacking. <laughs> and I just asked the Lord to continue to help me because I fell in that too. I fell all the way in that. But sometimes you have to look up and realize, okay, Lord, I messed up. I got caught up in this whirlwind too. And I need you to help me to get refocused again. Don't get so down on yourself. If you have, I've been there too. But there comes a point in our lives that we say, okay, enough is enough. Let me get refocused, Lord. Help me because I can't do this in my own strength. I need you in Jesus' name. So praise the Lord. I thank God on, the, on this morning for the reading of the word. I thank the Lord for what I received. And I pray that you all receive the word as well. And I ask the Lord to help us all to apply to our lives that we begin to stop and to not allow ourselves to keep falling deeper into what's causing us to lose focus on him and that we begin to regain that focus in him with his help, with God's help in Jesus name. And as I do every morning, I would like to um, encourage you guys to read the word of God in your personal time and ask the Lord to begin to speak to him and ask him for his understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he may give you a word for your life. And that is how you begin to develop your own personal relationship with God as you speak to him and dwell in his presence. Praise the Lord. I would like to extend an invite to you all to come listen to the word of God going forth every day, seven days a week at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with my ministry, La Lock Ministry, which stands for Locked in the Liberty of Christ Ministries, which is under the leadership of my pastor, Pastor Jimmy Griffith. Praise the Lord. You can do so by dialing in at 
773-922-8270. Again, the number is 773-922-8270. Praise be to God. So I pray on this morning that we all have a blessed and prosperous day on this Wednesday morning. And I pray that we continue to allow God to help us through the tough times, especially help us to get refocused when we've lost our focus and we allowed everything else to take our attention. So I pray on this morning that we begin to set time aside and really pour out to God and ask him to help us in those areas that we are lacking in Jesus name. And I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone. I pray traveling grace and mercy over us all. I pray and plead the blood of Jesus over all of our children and our family and our friends in Jesus name. We pray on this morning. God bless you guys and amen.